everyone, Sandra here from Creating Spain. Glad you could join me today. I'm doing a card which has got a little bit of movement on it today, which is why it's got this slit and this hole here. Now, I want to put a bit of colour on it before I start putting things together. I've got some Bahama Blue and I'm just going to go in with a nice bit of colour, a bit more around the edges perhaps just to sort of indicate a bit of a blue cloudy sky. Maybe need to go a little bit lower down with a trace of blue. There we are. I think that will do fine. Pear tart. Now these are straightforward dye ink, so you don't get quite such a strong colour as you would if you were using a different type. But that will do quite nicely. Nothing too drastic. A lot of this will probably be covered over at some point. I just want a little bit of background just in case some of it does actually end up showing. As I said most of it probably won't but you know just in case. flowers and I can put some other flowers on there. I'm just going to get some alcohol markers and add a bit of colour. This is a very loose type of thing, it's not sort of actual colouring, it's just adding a few strokes. So I'm just doing it as a simple background like this. I prefer not to have proper colouring in, as it were. Um, I think I've got a lighter one here. Whoops, wrong end. And it's just a few dots to simulate flowers being red. And I think I'll go for some more sort of tufts of grass. So a lot of this probably isn't going to show, I just want something there in case it does. Now I have a gear with a stick here. This is just two pieces of card glued together. And the important thing is that it's a smooth card because if it's not smooth, it's not going to work that well. So I want to push that through the slit and just get a brad. Now unfortunately my brads are huge compared to what I would like. They're five mil across. I cannot find any tiny brads anywhere. These are the smallest that I could find. And even these had to be ordered online. It's ridiculous. So pop that through there and open up. Now if it's a little bit stiff you can go with a brush and some talcum powder underneath here and it will help to loosen it up. This doesn't look too bad at the moment. There we go. But since that's the mechanism actually made, I can put another piece of card behind it and it's still going to work quite nicely. Notice I've put the brad on the front, not on the back, because I want to keep this quite slim. And if I'm going to put dimension on the front anyway, the brad isn't going to make any great difference. So these I can join with double-sided tape. Just make sure not to get any around the mechanism, around here, and it'll be fine. So here we are, I've put the card onto a base. Now you notice there's lots of holes here, and that's because I've been experimenting. But I decided there was no point in wasting the actual card, so I've used it regardless. Um, that now has a nice mechanism, and this provides a really good finger grip. So there we go. 
Now, if you don't have a brad, you can actually just cut a piece of card, put two holes in it, make it look like a button basically, and put some wire through it, twist the wire at the back, and then you have basically the same thing as a brad. If you take one of those off, you'll find that you can remove the plastic coating very easily, but it makes a nice soft wire that you can actually do homemade brads with those if you're absolutely desperate. I mean, if you don't use brads very often and you're stuck, that may well be the way to go. I decided to make this card relatively simple and I'm actually going to put this mouse on. I had him in my stash, I just thought he was cute. It's two layers of card stuck together and I want to stick him on here. Now a tip for this is to put a piece of paper, like so, if you're going to use a glue. And because I've been having so much problem with my self-adhesive tapes these days, because of the humidity, I did decide to use this glue, which is pretty sticky, and I'm hoping will do the job well. More like that. And I can take that away. I think he's quite fun. Okay, so I've cut out a piece here to represent a bush, and I'm going to use some darker green to just give it a little variation in colour. I don't want it to be a flat colour, so that makes it look a little more realistic. I'm going to try going over this with a little bit of olive grove and see what that does for it. Ah yeah, that provides a bit of shaving. Shaving, shading, oh dear, it's got into me today. So it's just a quick way of adding a little bit more realism. Not a lot, I mean you've got a mouse jumping up, a cartoon mouse jumping up, so yeah. We're not going for heavy realism here. Going to take my pen and put some knots in the wood. I'm going to go for a traditional knot there, and I'm going to go for a another one there. There we go, that will do. So this will go in that corner and it's going to hide that, obviously. I need to raise it up on foam pads to do it though. Backing off. And when I designed it, I designed it so that the edge would be flat to the card as well and it's the right height for the card. So, taking these pieces off. There we are, we have our tree trunk. I'm going to squidge that little bit of foam further in because it's sticking out. Technical term, squidge. It's still sticking out ever so slightly, so I will press it further back. There we are. And so it's getting there. Going to put some flowers on my bush, and then that's going to be raised up on foam again and put there. Now, most of that can have foam over it, just the very top of it that I need to be careful of. I'll put him just up there so I make sure that none of the rest of it gets in the way of his travels. So now that I don't have to raise these up, it's kind of easier. And there we go. I think that is pretty much done. Ah, it's not going to interfere with that. Very slightly. Okay, there might be a way around this. If I put a 
raised piece of foam on there, I shall be able to mount my mouse a little bit higher. rather than one. So if I peel it off very carefully I can raise it up a bit more. Because I've had to raise the mouse so this has to be raised as well. I think I might have a little butterfly that I can put on here as well. So I did manage to find a little butterfly. It's not as small as it should be, but it's one I already had in my stash. And I've just mounted that on the foam piece. And now I have my card with my mouse bouncing up and down, enjoying himself. So I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out in the end, even though it took me a little while to get there. The mechanism itself works really well and is very easy to do. And the main difficulty is making sure that nothing interferes with the mechanism that you put on afterwards. I will include the file down below. Now the file has a lot of different gears and so on in there. I will include the file for the tree trunk and the bush. Um, you can use whatever mouse or other creature you have. So there we are. I think that's pretty good. I'm quite happy. I'm glad I've just got it to work now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take care.